Hey, welcome to EMS Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman. Thanks again, guys, for joining me for another episode of the Monday Minutes. Um, we're going to continue on with the cardiovascular emergency. This is part three. We're going to focus on electrophysiology, and this will be a short segment, but I think it's important to kind of note some of the things we're going to talk about in this session. Um, before I get started, guys, remember this is just key information, guys. It's not full presentations, okay? I suggest for that type of stuff when you look at this that it triggers you to be motivated to go and seek out more information, get further training, uh, use resources online like TurboMedic that's available by me, um, by looking at other presentations on YouTube or your instructor, your textbook, things like that, okay? And remember, it's not for just for exams, okay? This is key information, and while it does help you pass your exams, but it also helps you build that knowledge base. It helps you understand more about what you're doing with your patients and make better clinical decisions, right, right, right write better reports and interact better with other healthcare professionals. So guys, today I want to talk about electrophysiology, like I mentioned, okay? And when we talk about that, we're talking about things like automaticity, and that's that self-generating electrical activity, things like excitability, the response to appropriate electrical stimulus, your conductivity, and that's the transmission of the stimulus from cell to cell, and your contractility, and this is when the stimulated by the appropriate electrical stimulus, okay? You might already, I'm sure, heard a lot of these uh, phrases already. This might be a little review for you, and I'm hoping that this review is, again, going to maybe solidify some more content for you and help you really master these basic key elements so that when you get into deeper into the weeds and things, it's going to all click and kind of pull together a little bit easier for you. Okay, so guys, one thing I want to mention about is, you know, regulation of the heart function, it, it comes from the from the brain, right, the autonomic part of it, and from hormones, okay, um, and from the heart tissue itself, okay. And we talk about things like baroreceptors, okay, those sensory nerve endings that sense changes in blood pressure from vasodilation to vasoconstriction, right? It lowers blood pressure in response to that increased arterial pressure, inhibits medulla, excites vagal center, okay, um, and decreases the force of contraction, okay, uh, of the heart as well. And also affects an increase in blood pressure, okay, in response to decrease in arterial pressure, right? This inhibits your vagal center and it activates your sympathetic nervous system and, of course, norepinephrine and epinephrine, all right? We're talking about things like chemoreceptors. These are the walls of the heart, okay, the atria of the heart, the vena cava, the aortic arch, the carotid sinus, Right, and this increases, um, senses increase in CO2 or in decrease in O2, and then that's going to initiate that sympathetic response to increase the rate and depth of respiration. Now, your chronotropic state is that control of the heart rate, right? Your bradycardia, your heart rate's less than 60, or the tachycardia for your heart rate that's greater than 100. All right, and then we have a, a, a dromatopic state, okay, and that's the rate of electrical conduction, all right, and then the anotropic state, which is that strength of the contraction. Now, again, guys, this is very basic stuff. I'm kind of just going over some more of the sort of the meaning of these phrases, right, and my hope, of course, is that it's going to trigger more memory for you, okay, but you'll see things on exams like anotropic state. It'll ask you what, what that is and what it means and stuff like that, right? By knowing that it affects the strength of a contraction, hopefully that will lead you to other things or what the, a question might be asking you. And the same thing goes for things like your dromatopic state, right? It's the rate of conduction. So it's going to kind of help you know what's, you know, kind of lead you along the path 
that when they ask you what that is and how it might relate to a question or a scenario, okay, or maybe even a drug, right, you might be giving it to a patient, it's going to click and it's going to help you, you know, kind of get all of it and tie it all together. Again, guys, this is very review. I'm going to kind of trying to go over just key elements here, all right, to help you focus on what you'll see a lot on exams, okay? But my my goal, of course, is that if you don't understand the bigger concept of baroreceptors, right, is that you're going to go ahead and open up your textbook, do some research, use a, a, a service like TurboMedic.com or other, other uh, websites out there that can help you understand what all this means and how it all kind of ties in together, okay? Um, hopefully, if you do know it, that this is going to be just a quick refresher for you, right? So the next time you encounter this on the exam, it's going to, you're going to be able to recall it much, much easier. All right, guys, that's it for me today. This, again, very short episode. We're going to wrap this up next time with uh, talking a little bit about um, uh, monitoring of the heart. Okay, we're going to get into that a little bit next time and talk about some of the dysrhythmias and things like that before we get to the assessment and wrap up the cardiology uh, cardiovascular emergency section of the Monday Minutes. All right, guys, go ahead, um, engage with me on social media. I'd love to see you on either Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. You can get a hold of me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at EMS Safe on both of those. Or you can hook me up on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. And finally, guys, um, I hope you go check out the main site at emssco.com. And that's where you can get some more information that I talked about to help you understand the bigger, broader subjects and, and delve deeper into these topics with other practice exams we have there, study help, study guides, videos, audios, helping to increase your knowledge, guys, because, you know, by doing that, you can be much more successful by increasing your education. And of course, that's going to open up more opportunities for you. And those opportunities might be a career opportunity or might be just an opportunity for you to help your patient more efficiently, right, and treat and transport them more appropriately. All right, guys, that's it for me. If you have some minutes of your own or love to hear them, send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. You can also just send me a um, comment in, in the notes below as well. I always read all the comments there as well. Um, and as always, uh, until next time, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.